there are a lot of different ways that you can expand your garden and your growing space in order to grow more food. Sometimes that means putting in more garden beds and actually doing major expansion that way. Other times it's finding different ways of growing. When we first started growing here on our homestead, this was our original garden space, but it was actually about half of this space right here. And as the years went on and we decided that we wanted to produce more and more of our own food, the way that we were able to do that is we actually did expand the space, but we did some other things as well. So one of the things that we started doing was growing more vertically. So we love using these. These are cattle panels or hog panels. They are 16 feet. So when you have them arched over like this, um, you can see, you know, I've got about six feet here and then they're four feet wide. So right now I have got my snow peas that are on this side and they will grow and trellis up here. And then I'll be having um, cucumbers will be planted over here. But then this whole intersection, I will be able to plant a lot of crops, um, about two really large rows worth of crops underneath this trellis system. So as far as like actual like square footage or square inches, um, this is actually going to be a very small amount, but because the crops are being trellised and growing up instead of sprawling out on the ground, I'm able to grow a lot more in the same amount of space. So sometimes it might just be figuring a way to go vertical in the garden and actually getting more in the footage that you have. And then when you have maximized that, then you can look at expanding out and actually adding in more garden space itself. So that's what we did originally with this plot. And then we added in the high tunnel, which is where I typically in the summer months am growing my tomatoes and peppers because we're simply so wet and cold here that the only way I can successfully grow tomatoes and not get blight is to grow them under cover. This also does provide a little bit of extra warmth, which we definitely need here being so cold, but its main purpose is it keeps things dry and I just use drip hoses. And then in the off season right now, which is we're really cold out, I can still grow a lettuce and cool weather crops in here almost year round. But we actually, we added this high tunnel um, first in order to grow those crops here. And then we expanded the actual original garden space. And then, and then each year we slowly added in more and more. So the next year, half of this garden space here, we added in. And then last year we doubled it and expanded. So this was the original spot right here. And then last year we just added that on. We almost doubled it by tilling up the yard and the lawn right here and adding that as a planting space. And then <laughs> every year, the moral of this story is though, is we were slowly adding. So each year we looked at what do we want to grow? Where can we grow it? And how can we maximize? So we didn't start out with this much garden space or this much of an area to cultivate and grow crops. Now we've got some small beds here. I've got the onions and the garlic are all in these spots, but these were newer additions as well. Now you might be like, well, that's great, but I don't actually have any more yard space to turn into additional growing space. Well, there's a couple of different things that you can do. One is to plant multi-seasonal. So right now at the time of this recording, we're in May, but we're extremely cold right now. So all that we'll be growing at this time is our cool weather crops. So I plant this in cool weather crops, and then we do a summer garden where I'm planting all of my summer vegetables. And then in late summer, we plant another garden or other crops, same, same stuff. So when these onions come up in July, then I will be able to follow behind with the onions in this spot. And I'll be putting in some cabbage or different brassicas that will then grow and we'll be able to harvest into the fall months and even into the winter months. So I'm doing succession planting by the season. So I'm actually getting um, usually almost two, at least two, if not three different crops in each spot of the ground that we have, which has been great because that has really allowed us to up our food production. But there's lots of little ways that you can expand and grow more without putting in uh, more raised beds um, or larger gardening spots. And so that's really taking advantage 
of adding in some container gardening and some other beds. Here is our perennial beds. Um, I've got asparagus is just starting to make its way to the surface, hallelujah. And then the raspberries and the blueberries, rhubarb in between the blueberries there, those crops are all coming on. Um, but over here, we have got uh, our grape arbor. So this is actually a very small amount of space. These grape plants are 15, 15 years old, I believe. But you can see, this is like what, six inch by six inch space of actual, actual like square footage on the ground. And then these all come up and these vines, once we hit, got a little bit of leaf bud just, just starting to happen here. Um, but as these start to come out of dormancy and begin growing, these vines will grow all the way up and over and they'll meet in the middle and this entire grape arbor will be covered in grapes. And that is just, as I said, going vertical. This is just wasted space. Like this is just air space. It provides a great living canopy when we do actually get sun here in the Pacific Northwest, which doesn't usually happen until July 5th. If you're from here, you know what I mean. Fourth of July is usually rainy. And then the sun comes out on July 5th. We usually do get a couple of months of sun July and August. This provides a great shade canopy as well as being a food source. So if you've got some type of patio or a back porch and you could put some type of arch or arbor over it, that can be a great place to plant something vining and then you'll have that as additional growing and food space. Some other options are containers. You can take vertical into container land. So growing things in containers is great if you've just got a back porch or a patio. Here is, this is a green stock which is a stacking system. And I actually have one more uh, tier that goes on top of this, but it's too early for me to put basil out or too cold. And I put my annual basils, basil on that and it'll go on a top tier that I'll add onto this. But this is a great system. You, the pockets are deep enough. I have my strawberries in here because the slugs don't like to come on the cement as much. And it's one of the only ways that I can keep the slugs out of, though I do have ducks on the way. So I got ducks specifically for slug patrol the eggs will be fabulous as well. Um, but this is the only way I actually can grow my strawberries without keeping the slugs, without having the slugs eat almost the entire plant and all of the crops before we can. It's worked great. I've had my strawberries in here for three years. So thinking of going vertical, even with container gardening, again, same amount of square space, but instead of just having one of these, I have four of these going up with all of these pl um, plants. Now these are good. These are the green stocks. I actually have a coupon code that we'll put beneath this video and a link if you want to go and check them out and grab some of these because these pockets are deep enough. You can actually grow root vegetables in here. A lot of containers aren't deep enough to grow uh, carrots or different root vegetables, uh, but these are. So these can work really great for a pl plethora of different vegetables. I've got some more containers here. This is my hyssop. And so I really wanted, this is obviously like an entertainment area. We've got our fire pit, uh, but I also wanted to have some different medicinal plants and different growing areas. So this is the hyssop. It's grown very well in here. And then we also have, this is both flower and part of our medicinal herb garden. And so we keep expanding this. This was what we did uh, two years ago, two or three years ago now. And then we just added this additional part over here uh, where I've got a lot of medicinal roses and some other plants that will be going in here. So not only is it visually pretty, but it also is extremely functional because we're able to grow a lot of our medicinal herbs. So it might be just creating different gardens like that. Like maybe you've got a great vegetable plot, but you want to start to bring in some herbs. And so look at your existing landscape or even some of your more entertainment areas of the yard and see is there anywhere that you can tuck and put in some more plants and some more beds. If you want to see more about the medicinal herbs that we're growing, you can go and watch this video here.